Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week we're taking a look at how to properly mount a scope to your air rifle. But first, I'm out on a garden pest control job targeting some destructive grey squirrels. I'm out shooting squirrels in a garden today. Now garden pest control really is the preserve of the legal limit air rifle, where that lower power is actually an advantage when it comes to safe shooting. I've also got a nut feeder set up here. Now that's got two advantages. It lets me know exactly where I'm going to encounter the squirrels, but also means that I know I've got a safe backstop behind my shots. So let's go and have a look and see if they're coming to it. I was actually put onto this job by a friend who's a pest controller and he was called in because the squirrels here have not only been ripping up the lawns in the gardens but they've also moved into the attic where they've been chewing up the wires. I'm happy to lend a hand because these squirrels are an introduced species that are having a negative impact on our native wildlife. Now my mate managed to account for three squirrels with his traps before they wised up and backed away from them. So all being well, we'll better do a bit better than that. Got one on the feeder. Well, that one just appeared from nowhere. I was looking around, looked back at the feeder, and it was sat there. It's a good clean kill, but I was getting some glare catching the lens of the scope. Hopefully it won't affect the camera, and there'll be something for you to see from that one. Thank you. 
and there's another one. It's interesting that both squirrels have grabbed nuts from the feed tray and then clambered straight up onto the top of the feeder to eat them. Now it may just be that they feel safer up there, but it's ironic that that position gives me a much clearer shot at them. Well, I did have an early chance at that one when it first came onto the feeder, but I was too slow to get the shot in, and it noticed one of the dead ones on the ground. Clambered down to check it out, it wasn't at all spooked by it. I couldn't see quite what was happening because it was partially obscured by the root of the tree, but it looked like it was having a go at the dead one, maybe even lapping the blood off of its head. I didn't get the shot in at that point. Fortunately, it climbed back up onto the feeder. That's three in the bag. Right, it's gone quiet now and I'm starting to get fidgety so before we run out of light I'm going to break cover and we'll take a bit of a look at the setup that I'm using here today. You'll have noticed that I'm using a hide today and it is a very basic one. I've mentioned in the past before that squirrels aren't so sharp eyed as a lot of quarry species and they're not that wary especially when they're distracted by a feeder. So I've got a very simple scrim net set up here. In fact, I've got a couple of hides set out on other shoots now. So I'm down to my very basic supplies here. I've got one proper hide pole on this side and just an old garden cane holding it up on the other side. And like I said, it's more than sufficient for squirrel shooting. I've got it set up probably only about 20 meters from the feeder using a legal limit air gun. It's been a bit breezy at times today. And quite honestly, there's no point in making it any more difficult than it needs to be. I'm sure plenty of you will recognise this feeder and I've set it up here for several reasons. Now firstly, it's enabling me to shoot in what I regard as being the safest part of the garden, furthest away from the houses. Now also, when I came here for a recce, I noticed this big oak tree has hollows in it that the squirrels were inevitably living in. Also there are more trees behind, they're all connected, so it just seemed like the most logical hub to expect to find those squirrels using. On top of that, it's a really wide tree, so it just gives me an incredibly safe backstop behind those shots. Now, I often load feeders with grain, but in a garden situation here, if the people in the house here or their neighbors are feeding peanuts, these squirrels are just gonna ignore grain. So I've offered them peanuts, which is pretty much their favorite bait, and they literally get addicted to the stuff. To be honest with you, you can see the tooth marks here in this feeder, it's made from oak, it's hard as nails, yet the squirrels have been absolutely tearing it up when I've let it run dry. The frustration obviously drives them mad until I come back, put more in and hopefully have them queuing up when I'm here to shoot.
Right, if you can hear a funny noise in the background, the goats are going absolutely crazy in the farm on the other side of the fence. Well, we've managed to account for three squirrels today. That's good, but it's not good enough because it's only as many as my mate managed with his traps. So, I'm going to keep that feeder going, keep the squirrels coming to it, and make sure I get back here and bag a few more. And I'm pleased to say that I've already managed to account for a couple more of those greedy greys. And now, it's the Airgun Show News. This is the Airgun Show News. Brought to you by the Airgun Centre. The Shooting Party has announced some major product launches at the UK Game Fair, which takes place at Stoneley on the 22nd to the 24th of July. The Staffordshire-based business will be unveiling the Mark II version of its award-winning Air Force One Trophy CO2 pistol and the Air Force One Sentry, an all-new multi-shot tactical PCP that comes complete with a red laser sight. Other big air gun names at the UK Game Fair include BSA, Gamo and Armex, plus night vision gear on the Starlight Scott Country and Thomas Jack stands. Keep up with the latest announcements at ukgamefair.com. Gunsmith Simon Howarth won the 8th World Hunter Field Target Championship at Kelmarsh Country Show after shooting 57 out of 60 over the Easter weekend. Air Arms took the manufacturer's title with a score of 215. Victories for the Sussex Gunmakers HFT team included Teresa Reed's win in the ladies class, with fellow Air Arms shooters Rian Jones and Joe Cochran taking second and third respectively, and Dale Harris's first place in the recoil class. Sportsmatch has added a 30mm medium height model to its range of mounts to fit the wide dovetails on BSA air guns. The TO35C mount costs $35.95 and also fits early Virac HW35s and CZ452 American rimfire rifles. As with all Sportsmatch products, the new mounts are made in Great Britain to exacting standards and guaranteed for life. And finally, want to get healthy? Go shooting! That's a word from a Natural England study which highlights links between good health and access to the outdoors. Basque has estimated that if people could not shoot, 35% of shooters would be a great deal less active and 40% would be somewhat less active. This decrease in activity would lead to more deaths, poorer health and an economic cost of £300 million. That was the Airgun Show News. Over recent months we've featured reviews of several top airgun scopes, including this one, the Optisan EVX from MTC. But one thing we've not covered in detail yet is how to mount your scope properly. And I think it's about time we did, because if you get that wrong, you're never going to get optimum accuracy from your airgun. It's important to start with a quality set of mounts that are right for the job. One piece mounts provide a really solid contact to prevent the recoil from spring or gas ram air guns from causing them to creep. If you shoot a recoilless PCP, then you're probably better off going with two piece mounts, which provide more flexibility and can be set up to straddle the magazine if it stands proud of the rails. The mounts need to match the rail on your gun, which will usually be dovetail rather than weaver configuration on most UK air guns. You also need to ensure that the mount rings are matched to the size of your scope tube, either one inch, often referred to as 25 millimeters, or the larger 30 millimeters. The scope mounts also need to be the right height. I usually like to mount my scope as low as possible, keeping it as close as I can to the line of the barrel, but you do need to have a gap between the objective lens and the barrel or cylinder and there needs to be sufficient clearance between the bottom of the scope tube or the saddle to prevent it from fouling the magazine if it's one that stands proud of the rails. Begin by setting up your air gun on a steady rest. 
Remove the top section from each of the scope rings and place the bases onto the rails, ensuring that they're properly seated before tightening them down. When it comes to spacing, I try to allow for between 15 and 20 millimetres between the inside of each scope mount and the scope saddle. That will give you some useful adjustment when it comes to fine-tuning eye relief. If you're mounting up to a recoiling air gun, make sure that the rear mount or the back of your one-piece mount is right up against the recoil plate if there's one present. Some recoiling air guns also have a hole in the scope rail to accept a pin that drops down from the mount to provide an added degree of anchorage. Place the scope onto the mounts, keeping the saddle fairly central if possible. Put the top sections of the scope rings back on and put in the screws very lightly. Try to keep the tension even between each of the screws, but they only need to be slack for now because you'll need some play when it comes to getting the eye relief and vertical crosshair set dead right. To achieve correct eye relief, shoulder the gun as you would to shoot and slide the scope backwards and forwards in the mounts until you see a bright, sharp, circular image that completely fills the sight picture. The important thing is to move the scope and not your head because you shouldn't have to compromise gun hold to achieve correct eye relief. Now you need to get the gun and the vertical crosshair exactly upright to ensure that the pellet travels up and down in precise correspondence with the reticle in windless conditions. Some shooters use a plumb line or spirit level to get it dead right, but it is possible to do it by eye. Move your head back a little from the scope and you can see the correspondence between the bottom of the reticle and the scope rail. You need to get it dead central. With eye relief and vertical alignment set, you can tighten down the top sections of the mounts. Take your time with this, gently tensioning screws that are diagonally opposite to each other to evenly spread the load, rather than clamping right down on one side or at one end. Keep working your way around, taking each screw down a little way at a time. Don't over tighten them as you could damage the scope. Holding the short end of the key should prevent you from applying too much pressure. You just need to feel them bite. There's no need to be heavy handed. Recheck vertical alignment to make sure the scope didn't twist as you tightened the rings down, which it shouldn't have. And that's it. Your scope is now properly mounted. Now it's ready for zeroing and we'll take a look at how to do that another time. That's all for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thanks for watching, and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits you could be taking advantage of through Airgun Membership. Yeah.